You guys remember Johnny Enlow? I've been covering him on my podcast for a while. He's a Seven Mountains Dominionist, which basically translates to a Christian extremist. We'll get into why I call him that in a minute, but after claiming that God revealed to him that God was going to make Trump win the election, he had to come up with some damn good explanations for himself when he lost. It's pretty interesting to watch him flop around like a fish out of water, so I figured we'd take a look at his latest explanations. Let's get into it. Okay, I've shown this clip on my channel a few times before, but I want to give a little context for the claims he originally made. Check out this clip of him claiming that God predestined Trump to win the election. And the Lord, it was like, he's like I'm really not interested in your all's vote this time. I'm doing it. I usually give you all that option. This time, I'm not. This is a rescue operation from heaven. This is this is a, a, a moment of the ages. This will go down. This time period will go down as a before and after AD, you know, a, a, but BC, AD, the, depending on what terminology you use now. This isn't the only clip he put out about it. He harped on it for months and months. He outright claimed that God gave him a vision, showing him that Trump was going to win the election. No misrepresenting that. He was very specific. Actually, he talked about it for like five minutes straight to make sure there were no misunderstandings. So what happened after Trump lost? Other pastors who also claimed that God revealed Trump's victory to them started saying that Biden is apparently so powerful that he usurped the will of God. God wanted Trump, but Biden fought God's prophecy and became president anyways. Against God's will. They have a very strange view of God. It doesn't match up with anything I was raised to believe. Over the next few months, Enloe went on to make claim after claim that Trump is going to be placed back into the presidency on different dates. December 14th, January 6th, January 20th, March 4th, and others. And finally, after months of failed prediction after failed prediction, his audience and his church started to doubt he was really receiving these messages from God. How long is your audience going to hold on if you get it wrong enough times? So in response to the fact that his congregation started criticizing him for his stupid, ridiculous so-called prophecies, he came out and he said this. Even if you think you have 100% devotion to God, it's going to cost you. And, and this is a key time. Once we establish what a key time in history this is, this is a line in the sand. This Trump test uh, you know, it's been clearer than ever. People I've inter uh, I've been on their programs and stuff and who's being advanced and blessed um, and, and ministries that are advancing and blessing and who I see an increased anointing and who are seeing more. They're seeing more favor. They're seeing more revelatory are people who didn't back off Trump. He actually said that this is a Trump test. If you don't continue to believe him, that God gave him a prophecy that Trump would be president in 2021, then you've failed the Trump test and you won't make it into heaven because of your lack of faith. That video came out on June 7th. A few days earlier, he made an appearance on the Flyover Conservative podcast to deliver this message. Have you heard any timeline? Of course, that one has to come out. Any timelines at all? It's the same thing God says, and it's the most frustrating timeline ever. Soon! <laughs> um, because uh soon with him is is uh never you know, our soon never yeah. never our soon I, I just you know it has to be this year and uh yep. um yep. we used to say it has to be this month yeah we used to say it has to be <laughs> the deal is we also know natural intel like you all do and yeah. so you that I have to be led by spiritual yeah, intel. Right. Yes. And I do believe the timing of the Lord is perfect in this. Yeah. And there are things, you know, it's one of my uh, prophetic friends right now uh, believes, uh, you know, there was something that, that President Trump is so disturbed by certain things that are happening. He's wanting to even accelerate that he was being tempted to accelerate and doing it faster than a plan that they had mm -hmm. and that it wasn't necessarily the way they're supposed to go. And I'm like, no, I want to know. I agree with Trump. Let's do it now. <laughs> um, sure. Let's do it. This is going beyond a normal prophecy that Trump is going to be president again. Although at least he seems to have learned his lesson about naming dates. Unfortunately for him, he made another specific prediction, which we'll talk about in a second. I honestly thought he learned from all this. He's also saying Trump is in direct communication with God and they've made a plan together. Well, that brings us to the latest clips. This one came out on July 2nd, 2021. He's referring to his last specific prediction. He claimed that God would move on July 4th, Independence Day. I guess he has one more blunder to cover up. Check this out. Johnny, you're saying that God is decreeing from heaven 
on the 4th for us that it's time for the Republic to come back in. I'm not hearing you predict a specific thing, right? You're saying God's decreeing something? He's he's making that declaration, and something's going to show up. And I don't know, uh, as always, and part of what I'll explain on the prophetic a little bit on the tail end of this is a good time to do that. I can't say exactly what that's going to look like. I believe something visible will happen on the 4th. So was he right? Of course not. It was vague enough that literally anything could have been taken as a sign. Unfortunately for him, literally nothing out of the ordinary happened on July 4th. How unlucky can you get? He's learned to keep his predictions vague for the most part, but even keeping them vague fails miserably. I love it. Let's keep listening. I believe something visible will happen on the 4th that lets us know, at least discerning people, oh, because you could say when Lazarus when he's when he's alive he's still in the cave and Mm -hmm. so less people know about it at first and that's a possibility but then there's now take the clothes the dead clothes off of him and then let him go and then it was progressive then all of a sudden there's a buzz around there and then the whole town and then everybody knows lazarus has come forth and so however the lord does that i believe we'll see something I, i believe the discerning We'll, we'll see something that Good. happens on the 4th Good. that tells us that this has, in fact, happened. And it may be it may be spectacular. It may not be. I don't have the insight on that. Absolutely love it. He was comparing this undefined event to Lazarus rising from the dead. So I take that to mean it was supposed to be a pretty serious event. Well, we're like three weeks past it now. Has anything happened? Honestly, I just want to know when he's going to learn not to stick his foot in his mouth. That brings us to the very latest clip. This one came out July 10th after the failed prediction. Check this out. President Trump is still the Cyrus and he still has unfinished business. And we've gone in depth on that before. And he still has the Isaiah 45 assignment to take down Babylon, which for our purposes represents the deep state. It is much more embedded in a much wider root system than we possibly imagined, maybe. In case you haven't caught on already, this guy seamlessly worked Trump into his theology. He isn't the only one. There are a bunch of pastors who basically turned Trump into the new Messiah. What he's talking about here is something he calls the Cyrus anointing. He believes that God chose Trump to receive the Cyrus anointing, where he plays such an important role in Christian history that he's effectively the new Jesus. And they're going to name the age after him. Instead of BC, which stands for before Christ, and AD, which stands for Anno Domini, which means the year of our Lord. Lord, we'll use BT and AT, before Trump and after Trump. This is a, a, a moment of the ages. This will go down. This time period will go down as a before and after AD, you know, a, a, but BC, AD, depending on what terminology you use now. He's comparing Trump to Jesus. That's nuts. Let's keep listening. Uh, the timetable is driven by God. You know, there's an aspect of... Uh, People ask why we don't know that the prophetic doesn't get those things. There's a whole lot of things that the Lord is not revealing. It's not just because they're bad prophets. You can't say things you don't see. And once the more you understand what's going on, it would literally mess up uh, strategy of how the Lord is doing it. You know, if he's using certain individuals in the world and certain leadership and certain militaries to do things, and we're telling all the secrets and timing. Um, right. It it really, you know, we have heard that actually from, we'll say from the other side, even uh, witches and warlocks are telling, uh, we'll say deep staters, they're not, they're not hearing anything. And so they are uh, t- told to listen in on the prophetics, on the prophetic channels, on the prophets to hear what's, what's going on. So the Lord's not going to give them anything that helps them know what to do, how to fight, how to stay in there long. What? God is hiding his plan from Satan? Then why did he write a whole book detailing his plans to win a war against him? That was kind of a stupid move on God's part, wasn't it? Put down your plans in the Bible where Satan can just pick the thing up and read through the strategy guide anytime he wants? This is nonsense. This doesn't match up with the idea of God that I or anybody else I know was given when we were kids. Is God more powerful than Satan or not? Has Satan been hitting the gym or something? God's supposed to be all powerful 
hell, isn't he? This brings me back to the old impotence versus evil problem. There are so many problems in society. People starving and dying of preventable illnesses all over the place. Why doesn't God fix them? Either he isn't powerful enough to, or he doesn't care. He's supposed to be all-powerful and all-knowing, right? What happened? Has he been slacking off? Maybe we should start making friends with Satan while there's still time. Seems to me like he has a real chance of winning the war, especially the way things seem to be going for God. And the dingus put his whole game plan down on paper for people to just read. What was he thinking? I thought he had like a 2000 IQ. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, there's Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check me out on Teespring or my Etsy shop. I sell all kinds of cool stuff on there, including game and controller stands for every system from the original Nintendo to the PlayStation 4. So give it a look. You might find something you like. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.